So hi, this is Mike Edelhart, and I'm here with another edition of Inception, our podcast about beginnings, the beginnings of companies, uh, new ideas in science, sometimes even a little glimpse of the future. And today we're here talking about our own beginnings, so beginnings of uh, a partnership here with Claire uh, Cherry, who just uh, joined us a few weeks ago uh, to take over as uh, our uh, uh, investment partner, lead investment partner in uh, the UK for Europe and beyond. Great to have you here. Yay. Great to finally be here, Mike. Uh, Yeah, and fantastic to be chatting to you today. Yeah, and this is one of those delayed gratification things, the whole thing. So we met way back in the beginning of the year and we decided we ought to work together in like what was it February yeah I think uh three four months in the end yeah and then it took months which I still again in the U.S. you know if you decide you take a new job you walk into your boss's office and go hey boss I quit and and they either say okay two weeks or they say ah really put your stuff in a box and get out of the building and this notion there, I guess it's common in the UK. You, we agreed you were coming. You said you were leaving. Then months <laughs> before they let you out of your last, uh, out of your last uh, gig, and and let you actually start. Yeah, sounds uh, very familiar. And I mean, uh, I completely agree with you. I think the the UK system could learn something from the US in in that regard. And we've had CEOs of companies on six 12 months uh leave periods which yeah is um unimaginable i think to to startups and people trying to build something so yeah probably do a refresh at some point yeah it was a little startling but now you're here yay and um and uh and you're right now i presume at your place in currency i am yes yeah. so uh and so you go back and forth to london and all that but Currency. So do you consider yourself a Brit? Do you consider yourself a Gern? What do they call people who live on Gern? Gernzeans? Gernzeites? Uh, Gern is the, the Gerners? I guess, the slang, the slang term. All right. So um, are you a Brit or a Gerner? And, and, yeah. <laughs> well, I would have said pre- Brexit, we definitely considered ourselves Brits, um, albeit we have our own laws, our own government here. All bar that, we would say we were English uh, in every respect. But post Brexit is a is a different phenomenon because I guess we've kind of taken it and run with it as a, a small island to define ourselves as potentially very useful uh, in not being part of England at this point in time. But Yes, I think to all intents and purposes, and having done uh, 10 years in London, I still very much consider myself uh, predominantly a Brit. Got it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You're sitting out there in the middle of what the French, I think, are now calling the French Channel, since they're claiming uh, yes. all the fishing rights and, and everything else. Uh, uh, after, yeah, smack after bang in the Brexit. middle of that, yeah. Yeah, got it. So uh, delighted to have you here. Uh, maybe share a little bit about you and and how you got here and i'd be curious you know obviously uh, we're working together and i'll you know why us you have a really interesting background you could have gone to work a lot of places and uh, uh what was it about here that you found uh, intriguing yeah i guess maybe i'll um i'll take it back to the the very beginning because i think that explains a lot about why i chose you and, and what excited me about joining the team um So if we take it back to the start and the days of studying, uh, I guess I define myself as a sort of light touch scientist. So uh, I studied biology, chemistry and economics at university, mainly to keep my options open. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't necessarily have a defined career path in in any sense. Um, And certainly at that point in time, I had no exposure to venture capital, startups, or or anything else exciting along those lines. Um, I think if I look back, uh, the irony is I probably would have done very well in a commercial role at an early stage healthcare or biotech company, but you know, that wasn't something that I even knew existed. So uh, instead I sort of packed my bags, moved out of Durham, went to London, uh, that's where all my friends were, 
uh, no job, no idea of what I wanted to do, but thankfully got a placement for six weeks at a venture capital fund, did back office administration for them, absolutely loved it. Um, and I guess the, the rest is history. So I moved on to their investment team, it was a very small team, sort of four people who'd actually had quite um, a lot of success in, in healthcare. So was exposed to any number of businesses. I did investments in pensions administration software on the more boring side, all the way through to, uh, I guess, synthetic biology, trampoline parks, you know, uh, a very broad range. But yeah, it was fantastic. You got a lot of exposure. We did a lot of deals. Um, and I absolutely loved it. But I think as I reflected at that point, I was there for about five years. Um, really everyone that I was learning from and, uh, and who had surrounded themselves around me had ultimately specialized in something that they were passionate about and really could add value from an investment perspective. So at that point in time, I decided, you know, Am I going to go back to school to do a PhD to go into effectively a healthcare fund because I knew that I love businesses that were the changing the shape, changing the face of, of that industry. Um, but realistically, I was also very pragmatic that I'd not been studying for a long time. <laughs> And going back to that uh, and not being paid might be a, a very different ball game. So uh, I went with consumer, which was the other side where I guess I'd seen quite a lot of businesses um, and done a few investments um, at the first fund. So I joined True, which is a consumer focused investment and innovation firm in London. Um, again, it was a very diverse environment. And I think it's funny because reflecting before I, I joined, I guess everyone would define me as a, a consumer investor, but actually I think the most interesting piece to me, if I look back at the businesses that I invested in is actually, it's not necessarily building consumer brands, but it's building businesses that build products that people love, whether that be products, services, healthcare, therapeutics, you know, there's a defining uh, way that consumers behave when they show real love for, for businesses. And I think that, yeah, certainly I'm excited that hopefully that translates to, to what we're doing here. So that was my potted history. Got it. It's a great history. And, and, and one of the things that's interesting uh, for me, and I think that's true for other team members here, stepping in for someone who is, was a scientist who did all those things you decided not to do, has degrees to the right of her degrees, to the left of her, a little venture experience, but was basically learning venture from a scientific point of view while here. And having you here, our conversations are just so different because I have a hard time imagining you doing anything else but venture capital. It seems like you walk like a venture capitalist, you talk like a venture capitalist, you think like a venture capitalist. It's actually been very, very refreshing for me to uh, uh, be able to sort of talk inside baseball with you mm. about we're running a fund. Here. Let's run a fund. Let's act like fund managers. Let's uh, do those kinds of things and focus there. And I think other team members are starting to learn a lot from you because we have a lot of young folks on our team or folks who come here from science or other areas um, because they believe they'll learn a lot. Uh, while they're here and I think very quickly you've become a, um, a teacher. <laughs> yeah I think it's uh, I mean I guess I reflect now and feel very lucky that I love every part of the job and I think to that point you know certainly where I started in doing administration and all of the ugly side of venture capital diving into spreadsheets and and you know not the exciting bit that gets all the PR you know, I appreciate that, I value it, and that's what makes the wheels go round for the rest of it. So, yeah, I guess inadvertently I've had exposure to both sides of it and, yeah, I've been very pleased to be part of it and, and a small part of people's journeys of building amazing businesses um, and facilitating some of that. So, yeah, it's been a fantastic ride so far. And hopefully, uh, well, almost certainly just getting started. Uh, uh, so... You've been here a little while. You sort of have a sense of what's going on here. The unusual, I think it's unusual anyway, kind of a remote team, the uh, 
uh, focus on health and happiness, the uh, team interacting with the software system to try and be real complete about finding companies early. Uh, uh, what's your initial sense of it here? What are you now chomping at the bit to help us do that we didn't used to do, get better at? What's surprised you uh, mm -hmm. in your early experience here? Yeah, I guess maybe to answer the question that I uh, didn't answer just before, which is why I was attracted to the fund in the first place. And I remember it vividly. I was just about to meet with you. Um, and so obviously I went on the website, looked at the blogs, and you'd recently written a post titled, What's Our Purpose? And it laid out five points across uh, managing legendary funds, finding companies that impact the world positively, and all, every single one of those points resonated with me and I guess I'd always struggled internally you know as I thought about my next move of what did me did make me get out of bed in the morning you know what made me tick was it backing female founders was it just early stage investing was it consumer and I saw your post and I thought you know what that encompasses everything I would have wanted to write down on a piece of paper so I was like I probably should meet this guy um, and yeah I guess ever since then you know, it's really lived up to expectations. I think it's a testament to you and the team of the culture that you have built remotely. And I think part of the attraction for me, and it's interesting that you mention it, is the diversity of backgrounds. You know, everybody brings a completely different perspective, which is super important in evaluating businesses and, and the growth of the fund. So yeah, I think for me, since I started, um, it's just the sheer opportunity that we have in front of us. You know, everyone I speak to, all I get to start every single call is, I love your thesis. I completely believe in your thesis. You know, it really resonates with me. And I think in this day and age, having that focus and, investing with purpose I guess you know if I if I look at what I concluded was exciting to me it's ultimately being in a very powerful position to deploy capital into businesses that you know you think are going to leave a better imprint on the world whether that be for people or for planet um, you can't underestimate that yeah that's a, a fantastic place to be and, and is exciting every single day so yeah I guess it's a combination of you know the day job and meeting fantastic founders and, and backing great businesses, but equally the potential of what the fund could become and, and where the thesis evolves going forward. Yeah, uh, uh, I think the feeling was the, the same on this side. Uh, it was really uh, kind of unique. Uh, uh, the minute I uh, met you, even on early Zoom calls, my reaction was, she's us. She doesn't work here yet, but I feel like I'm talking to somebody on the team. And we had to come to New York to meet a bunch of team members. And yeah, it's a pretty diverse group. You've got, you know, Middle Eastern PE guy and Swiss, Scottish, Italian scientists and uh, 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 data folks and, uh, uh, you know, all different kinds of people and this kind of cohesive culture. And and we've seen others who come into that environment just kind of freeze. It's like, who the hell are these people and what's going on? And they're talking, you know, some sort of strange argot and help me. And you came in, sat down, and everybody felt in love. I mean, it was like everybody known each other for five mm -hmm. years already. And uh, uh, it just felt so, uh, so natural and appropriate. And uh, I think it seemed the same. Uh, uh, I'm going to say ever since both of these months, <laughs> <laughs> it's it seemed the same. Uh, well, talking about ever since, so you know, it's become a bit of a theme in the fund. I'm old, uh, and uh, and the team is young. You're young, and uh, so uh, you talked about the future of the fund and all that. If if this were under your control, and to some degree it is. Uh, what is it? What would you want it to be a year from now, five years from uh, uh, now? Uh, you know, is it the Economist headline, Claire Cherry, Queen of Venture, or or what? I think for me, I guess the part that resonates both internally and externally is the unique focus on health and happiness. I think for me that 
encompasses any number of areas you know do i see us moving into as you've touched on um a number of times sort of uh alternate energy sustainable materials you know i guess i see it as an umbrella for any number of very exciting things do we decide to do something in web3 and the future of decentralization maybe you know i guess the the beauty of uh, the fund is that everything feels within reach and, and you've created an environment where people run with things. They go after areas that interest them. They meet with people that interest them and, and great things come from that. Um, so I guess if uh, it was my fund or in the direction it was going, then in many respects, it wouldn't change. And I guess the big part that I didn't mention in terms of attractiveness is the data side you know i believe that that's a super powerful tool and in time has an ability to shape as much what we're looking at as what we should be looking at you know five ten years down the line i guess that's the biggest challenge with venture capital even now you say you feel old i feel old you know if i look at how gen z are behaving and all of this and i speak to them and i'm like wow it's very different to the way that i grew up or the way that i interacted with friends and all of that piece so yeah and that's uh, i guess to its nature i think the team should always remain very young and you have a fantastic network of graduates coming through um that i think you know keep us on our toes they bring a perspective that we wouldn't otherwise get which is is very important um and yeah it's been exciting there's just a real energy around um the company and the people within it which yeah makes it feel like whichever direction we we wanted to take it would be possible i don't ever foresee that yes our scope of investing might broaden we might support businesses later but you know everybody is so passionate about the vanguard of early stage businesses and business building that that's why we all get out of bed to to bat those people at the end of the day. Yeah, I agree with that ferociously. I, I, I think from my point of view, if there's one, call it legacy or something, I want to leave for this group, it's that we don't matter. And we've talked about that. And so, in so many venture funds, it's like, look at us. We are so special. We all went to Harvard. We all work for McKinsey. We are all cool. We have great suits. We have beautiful cars. We have done terrific things. It's all about us. But any small group of people is going to be wrong almost all the time. Mm. Um, they just, you know, there's only eight points of view, 10 points of view. It's uh, uh, habit bias. It's background bias. It's a thousand and one different kinds of bias. And the result is you get 150 firms here in the Valley Wall act the same way, do the same things, come to the same conclusions for the same kind of reasons and are simply replicating one another's uh, behavior. And all of those behaviors may or may not have anything to do with how the actual billions of people on earth mm -hmm. act, care. And, and here, I just always want to emphasize that and kind of build it into the culture and, and into the people that don't fool yourself. It's not about us. It's about the 8 billion people on the planet. They're the ones that are going to decide what matters uh, and what becomes valuable and what becomes important and what they bring into their lives. So our job, as much as anything, is to try and always be looking external. And so you said the team should always be young. Probably true. But even more than that, for me, it has to be diverse. Mm -hmm. and all different kinds of people on the team reflecting all different points of view of the world outside the team so that there's a little bit of a chance that every now and again we may actually stumble on something that's true and wreck it true in the sense that this is something the world is actually going to do or uh, act upon and uh, take that seriously and be willing to respond to it and not go we can't do that i've never done that before we can't do that that wasn't part of my seminar at harvard it doesn't matter yeah, and I think it's it's a very important point that I saw some some stats out this week around returns for first time funds and actually they're broadly the best in the market because by that point you've generally come in with a completely unique perspective and open eyes and you haven't thought I'm the best at this or I know how to do deals or you haven't got an investment committee that signs off on the basis of one partner saying yes, you know, and that's the piece that that everybody um, risks falling into. And I think it's exciting that 
Um, we don't have any of that here. And, and a part of that is because a lot of people don't, well, none of us come from a traditional background yeah. of, of starting a venture fund. And, you know, I think that's, uh, yeah, the biggest takeaway for me and yeah, what you can achieve with that. Yep, exactly. Well, uh, we could talk and talk and talk and talk. Um, and we do, and we have, and we will, but we should probably wrap this now. Uh, so let's make this a regular thing. So we'll do it like a year from now. And then uh, 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 we can see how you've changed, point of view has changed, how I've changed, uh, and uh, catch folks up. Uh, great to have you. Uh, and now we're going to wrap this, and we're actually going to go like to work, uh, <laughs> So, uh, uh, which is the fun part. So uh, welcome, Claire. Uh, uh, sort of Brit, uh, uh, and uh, 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 can't wait to get over there uh, and see you shortly. And you're going to be over here uh, next week. I am, yes. Well, thank you for having me, Mike. And yeah, look forward to the reflections uh, in the future. <laughs>